Byron was mentioning ruminants the other day in context of the giraffe, and so I thought I would just explain a little bit more about that, simply because I think we often talk about it, but we don't often really understand what's going on. So here is the stomach of a ruminant. This is the esophagus, which in this part of the world we spell something like this, esophagus, and it would be attached, of course, to the throat and then the mouth with the teeth in it. Very nice. The rest of the animal will be drawn shortly. Normally no top teeth at all, actually. Right, then we go down. What happens is the grass, when it's, well, we better actually draw the, the creature immediately so that I can explain exactly how it works. Um, I don't know what kind of an animal this is. <laughs> uh, right, now what? <laughs> I've never met anybody with such an appalling sense of proportion. <laughs> have. Right, so <laughs> the grass goes into <laughs> this animal's mouth, uh, this pseudo cow or rock thing that we have going here, and uh, there we are, it travels in here, and it is barely chewed the first time round, so it travels down, it's a green you see, it goes like this, and it skips this part here, and it goes into what we call the rumen. And in the rumen, the initial phases of a sort of bacterial digestion take place. So the rumen is this big chamber here. It's all over the place. This is all the rumen there. I think there's some baboons. Either that or Steph approaching the tent, I can't tell. We'll just keep an eye out there because I think there might be some baboons. So there we have the rumen, right? And that's where the giraffe or the auroch cow thing will store all of them, will store all of the grass in there. And then when the rumen is full, it lies down in the shade or in the giraffe's case, just start standing still and looking gormless. And then it goes and starts to re-chew its food. So it comes from the rumen, back up the esophagus, and is chewed by the grinding teeth of the auroch slash cow. Then from here, and how the exact physiological mechanism of that, I'm not really sure. Then it goes into this part of the stomach here, where there is a different suite of bacteria living. This thing is called the reticulum. There we go. That is the reticulum. And from the reticulum, it goes down through here into the omasum. I can't believe I'm rem remembering this. And from the omasum, it goes back out into the abomasum. Right? And from there, it travels out into the small intestine. Right. I'm just going to write that now, small intestine. Whereupon it looks pretty much the same as it does on the rest of the animal. So the small intestine will be sort of meters and meters and meters. That, and then eventually it uh, gets to the bottom where the tail is. And um, small black pellets come out, fall to the ground and make a pile over here. And then uh, what happens is that you get a dung beetle that comes along. <laughs> and it eats the dung. 
<laughs> that is basically uh, the ruminants digestive system. D David, could we just take a moment to look at the entire entire uh, picture there? I think that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Barry, I think you were saying that you didn't think my cow oroch, sorry, Larry, you didn't believe that this would have t stood the test of time that is the evolutionary test. Um, yes, possibly not. Right. Tamira, are you suggesting a GoFundMe page for drawing lessons? Tamira, I think that if you don't think I can draw, I think that you have very poor taste in art. Now, come over here, please. Samantha.